Hello and welcome back to my latest SQL Server Quickie. In my SQL Server Quickies 25 to 30, I have previously spoken about the various transaction isolation levels that SQL Server offers us. And I have also previously talked a lot about blocking situations. In today's SQL Server Quickie, I want to continue this discussion by talking about deadlocks. A deadlock occurs when two queries are waiting for each other and neither can proceed. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I want to show you how simple it is to trigger a deadlock in SQL Server and how SQL Server reacts to this deadlock. I want to show you now on the flip chart how simple it is to trigger a deadlock in SQL Server between two queries. Imagine we have a first query, that query changes data on table 1 and for changing data we acquire here an exclusive lock. Then we have another query and that other query acquires an exclusive lock on another table like table 2. And now in the next step our first query wants to acquire an exclusive lock on table 2. In that case we can't acquire that exclusive lock because the other query has already an exclusive lock so we have to wait here. This is just a traditional blocking situation in SQL Server. But now imagine our second query continues with its work and that query wants to acquire also an exclusive lock on table 1. In that case, our query also has to wait because the other query has already an exclusive lock on that specific table. Means both queries, both sessions are waiting on each other. No one can make process anymore and therefore we have triggered a simple deadlock. Let's switch now over to SQL Server where I want to show you this specific example and I will also show you how SQL Server can resolve that deadlock in a fully transparent way for us. In this demonstration I want to show you how simple it is to trigger a deadlock in SQL Server. In the first step I create two tables in DempDB and I insert a record into each table. In the next step I start a new transaction and update a record in the first table. Then I switch over to another session and I also start a new transaction and here I update the record in the second table. When I now continue with this transaction and try to update the record in the first table, the update statement just blocks. This makes sense because the other session has already an exclusive lock on that record. It is a traditional blocking situation. But now I switch back to the first session and I will try to update the record in the second table which is currently blocked by the other session. This will trigger a deadlock situation in SQL Server. But before I do this, I switch over to SQL Server Profiler where I have already configured a trace which captures deadlocks. When I now execute the update statement, it takes a few seconds and afterwards one of the two transactions is rolled back. As you can see, the transaction was rolled back because the deadlock monitor in SQL Server found the deadlock situation. During the rollback phase, the acquired locks were released and therefore the other transaction was not able to acquire the necessary exclusive lock needed to perform the update statement. Therefore, we can now finally commit this transaction. A deadlock is also a situation from which you can recover completely transparently in your data access layer. You just need to check for the specific error number and retry your transaction. As you can see, when I now rerun my transaction, it completes without any problems. That's the nice thing about deadlocks. These are no permanent errors and 
if we now switch to SQL Server Profiler, we can also see that the deadlock was captured in a so-called deadlock grave for further analysis. If you were on SQL Server 2008 and higher, you can also use extended events to capture deadlocks. SQL Server itself also captures historical deadlocks with the system health event session since the last restart of SQL Server. Therefore, it is very easy with extended events to find out if you have already deadlocks. In this SQL Server quickie, I have talked about deadlocks in SQL Server. A deadlock occurs when two queries are waiting for each other and neither can proceed. The nice thing about deadlocks in SQL Server is the fact that SQL Server uses the deadlock monitor to find out if a deadlock occurred. And if it, and if it found one, the cheapest transaction is rolled back to resolve the deadlock. If you trigger that error in your data access layer, you just have to submit your query again to fully recover in a transparent way from this error situation. I hope that you have enjoyed this SQL Server quickie and I'm already looking forward to welcoming you next month. Stay tuned and have fun!